Okay, welcome back. So now we have a geometry problem from the Iranian Geometry Olympiad, where I have a circumscribed quadrilateral ABCD, and with its tangent points KL eminent. So immediately, like I'm not going to draw ABCD first. This is a situation where I actually want to start by drawing the circle. So I equals zero zero will be that, and I'll call the end circle W for lack of a better name. Uh, I let's just say radius one or whatever. And let's zoom in. Uh, Geico, you should project the sides of the triangle onto side BC. Or, project the side opposite BC onto side BC. Um, okay, so there's four points on it. K is point omega. L is point omega. Oh, wait. Oh, this is an if and only FGL. Oh, no. Oh, I can't stand this. All right. <laughs> So, uh, K, L, M, N. Okay, so the lines are going to extend quite a bit, it looks like. Okay, we'll just draw it. Okay, T, K, U is tangent, K, omega. TL equals tangent L omega, TN equals tangent M omega, TN equals tangent N omega. Cool. That's probably the easiest to do it. Those lines look pretty bad, so I'm gonna hide them pretty soon, but. Okay, and then AD and BC meet at E and AB. And oh god, that's off the page. Okay. A, B, C, D, E, F. <laughs> Is there a way I can make these things like not just all of like every- yeah, jeez. It's this one, right? I want to move that one. Okay, they all fit! Yay! Maybe, not really, honestly. Oh my god, Geo. That's a problem. Is, oh, jeez. No, 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 no. Oh, you go there. Ha. Ah. Isn't AD tension at. Oh, frick. No! Alright, we, we can deal with it. We can deal with this. Okay, disaster averted. Um Okay, there we go. Alright, so KM intersects AB and CD. Oh my Jesus. At X. We're gonna to have to zoom out a lot. Uh, CD is not tangent. Wait, what? AB. Wait, okay, what's, what the heck? AD is K. DC is. Oh no. B. Uh, okay. Uh, so I also got the order. <laughs> Disaster. Okay, so KM, AB, and CD at X and Y, and LN line uh, 
Okay. So K N equals nine. K M L N equals nine. Okay, so this this diagram sucks. Oh my lord. Everything is off the page. Uh Oh my god. This is a disaster. Were we able to figure it out? Uh we didn't work through the details. So arguably no. This is this diagram is awful. I can't believe this. Okay, so put it in the circumcircle of x, f, y. It is tangent to the circle with diameter e, i. If and only if Tez is L. Oh, <sighs> I don't want to do this problem anymore. <laughs> I can't believe this. Okay, so... MK, all right, let me actually think for a moment. MK intersect AB is like what? So what's the inverse of these? Like, I feel like everything here can be kind of inverted. Um, MK, so F, X, Y. So the inverse of F is a certain Mikhail point. I don't remember. No, it's not. F is N, N. Okay, this, the inverse of F is the midpoint of LN. What's the inverse of x? It's so mk is like that giant circle, and then the circle with diameter i n, or something like that. So the inverse of line ab is the circle with diameter i n, and the inverse of line mk is k i. Okay, so how do I intersect? So circle with diameter i n and the circle with diameter i e should intersect uh, somewhere. Where where is the intersection? I n i l. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna adjust the points until they're tangent to see if the condition is equivalent to harmonic or something silly like that. Uh... Oh my freaking god, they changed so quickly. Wow, okay. So.
mm-hmm, okay. Uh, so what the heck is going on? So the tangency condition is so bad that I really want to invert it. Because this is equivalent to saying that's like the inverse of xfy is tangent to the red line mk. The problem is, I don't know if I have a good description. Well, nothing to do but zoom in. Wow, they're really tangent. Okay. So we're going to zoom all the way in. And I'm going to try my best to remember the names of the. Okay, who am I kidding? I might not remember them. Oh, uh, but x inverse. We'll call it x prime, alright? Because I don't know if that's GeoGebra lets me do stars. If if ABCD is cyclic. Oh, that's not a bad guess. ABCD is cyclic, if and only if that's a right angle. Like these things meet at a right angle. So I would totally believe that. Okay, so oh my god. See now they're so close to each other you can't tell them apart. So now I'm gonna zoom all the way in here. And uh a, B, and C, D. Wait. Okay, F prime is the mid, just the midpoint of NL. Oh, oh, that's interesting. It looks like the tangency point is the intersection. Oh. Oh, that was very, very interesting. Um. That's good to know. Um. How would you do this construction on paper? I don't think you do. I think you give up and freehand and distort the diagram on an actual contest. Like, there, there's... Like, the problem is, like... This is with GeoGebra. This is the smallest I was able to get the diagram to be. It looks like this. <laughs> They're over here. Like, you, there's not enough space. But yeah, I, I think our guess is right. That, that feels right to me. That um, these points are cyclic exactly when... It's a right angle, and if it's a right angle, then it's tangent at that point. <laughs> at the current size of the inverse of XYZ, you need to draw your diagram over the ceiling. Yeah. It's super useful to know that this point is important, though. Um, okay, so... How did I... What did I say X prime was? X prime was the intersection of... I am N. Uh, so like that red line and yeah, no no no. Can I just show the cyclic or something? Uh, or I don't know. I don't know exactly what the condition. Like when I vary it, uh, that circle does weird stuff. But maybe what I can say is I want. I don't know. I don't know what I want. I don't know anymore. Ah ah. Okay, but either way, this point is important. This point was important to begin with, and now it's super important. We'll call it G. Why not? So here's the question. Is cir maybe a circle X prime Y prime G is tangent unconditionally? If so, I learned something new today. Uh, yeah, that looks like it's true, right? Looks like X prime Y prime G might be tangent unconditionally. Okay, why the heck would that be true? Uh... Okay. F prime, D prime. This is what this circle is important. We'll name it. I'm being scammed. Why is that true? Because the inverse of this point is not anything. Super good. 
Yeah, I agree. G is intersection of AC cap BD by Brian Con. Um, but so we at least have an unconditional statement. Unconditional statements are uh, make me not freak out as much. Should I invert it? Bad. I, I don't want to invert it though. Okay. Uh, okay. So which, which circles were we drawing? We're drawing the circle with diameter i n and diameter i m, right? That's how we got these points. Or i l. So this is a circle to i l, l. They meet at the midpoint, whatever. Uh, I don't know. line x prime y prime go through anywhere if i invert back do you get the mccall picture do i okay let, let, let me invert back so okay zoom out we're back in the inverted picture no i don't need point h uh so okay now everything's all over the place but it's x y and the inverse of g what is the inverse of g Uh, polar of line IG polar of G is nice is it oh does that go through E and F Is that true? I guess it's like, okay, sure. I, I agree, actually. So, I should be thinking about this in terms of K and ML. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so what's the claim? I want X, Y, G prime to always be tangent to M, K, G, E. And yeah, that, okay, if that's true, I agree it should be something about the Mikkel thing. So... Think, think, think. What are X and Y? Uh, so G prime always lies on EMK because of inversion. Inverse of G is not the tangency point. It is. It is. Or like if they're tangent. So the claim the claim we're trying to prove right now, uh let me let me hide this what is this one? circle this is xfy right hide xfi we don't care about xfi right now uh the thing i'm interested in is xyg prime and our my claim is that these are always tangent at g prime that's a claim uh why is that true i have no freaking idea um but let me start typing
Why would those be tension? Thank you, End Encounter, for the follow. Inverse of KM is circle AI, which passes G prime. Yeah, I agree. Um, like, it's definitely that's definitely a tangency point if ABCD is equivalent to if NL is perpendicular to KM. My question is, I don't see why this claim is true. This claim is true unconditionally. We know it from the diagram, but I don't see why. Um, I guess. Okay, actually, one one approach might be like. Um, You might know some of the angles. Um, I G prime. So I E is a diameter, right? So maybe what I should be doing is I should be taking I G prime and seeing where it meets the circle again. And oh, well, actually, I don't know what this point is, so that's not good. Um. Oh, what a monster. What is this? Okay. How am I supposed to show two suit circles or tangent? Maybe I'd have better luck with X prime and Y prime, you think? If I have to, like, let X prime, Y prime intersect line MK at some point and try to show that the powers do the thing I want them to do, is that a viable approach? I don't know exactly where the... This is anything good. We are not using any condition. Right now, this claim we believe is true unconditionally, and we're trying to prove it. X prime, Y prime should meet. Okay. Yeah, I think that bugs me at this G prime tangency is I don't know where this I don't have any information about this point. Um What the heck is this?
There's an APMO problem about two tangent circles that I is vaguely reminiscent of this, but I don't think I don't know that problem well enough to use it here. Um, it's like APMO twenty fourteen five. It's a Casey problem. But I don't. I don't know, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I'm well enough to use it here. G prime M X tangent to B C seriously? I let's find out. No. I wanna go back to the inverted one. So like the X prime and Y prime are so weird, but they they are better inverted than are they? I don't I don't really know. So, hang on. So, there's two, is there two right angles? Um, like, if I look at E and, my hypothesis is a, passes through X prime, right? Yeah, G prime, X prime, Y prime. Um, all right, so I'm gonna shrink this circle so it's a little, you to see what the heck is going on. I'm gonna ignore this stuff all the way. I'm gonna ignore all the other garbage. Um, this circle, let's color it slightly differently so you can see it. Yeah, so X prime is like a point such that E and X prime are collinear. Um, Really, X prime is the foot from I to EN, I guess is the best way of thinking about it. And we'll distort this one a little as well. So EL. Yeah, so I almost don't think that this circle is helpful either. It's like the feet from... The center, yeah, this circle is actually the... seems like the main player here. Um, and it's like I have this EN, this EL. Yeah, M and X prime Y prime. I could treat it as shoot, shoot. And then finally G is like some random thing. It's like this. And I want to show a tendency. Uh, what the heck is going on?
Okay, I hit I hit the IL circle, so I should accordingly hide the IN circle. So these two circles are orthogonal, right? What am I doing with this random midpoint? This is like the midpoint of a thing and the midpoint of a different thing. And then there's this like G. I messed you. We are getting destroyed by a geo problem. Come join us. So if I treat um What do I do with the midpoints? That's the real question. Why are there two midpoints there? I wonder if I should invert with center E. Yeah, we we think the condition is equivalent to ABC that would be like bicentric. Um, I almost want to invert this with respect to E because it will take X prime to here, Y prime to here, and mm, that's, that's just not right. Something's going on. Um, let me try. I think I'm looking at this picture upside down, but that's okay. Okay, I, I have to rotate this. I can't think with this stupid upside down diagram. Okay, we think the condition is equal to ABC by centric, but we're not able to prove it. For oh, it's so apparently the following statement is true. I have this purple thing. Um, I don't even care about. This these two green lines right now. Let's clean them up. Uh, I don't really care about G prime either. I don't care about T or A right now. I just want to prove this freaking demo. Um. I don't... Okay, I do care about that red line. So it's like I have EMK... I have a kite... Cyclic kite I am uh, Kaim, right? Cic if this was a T instead of M, it'd be kite. It'd say kite. And... I... I... Yeah. I, yeah, whatever. Purple, purple and green are given. And then apparently what the statement is that if I... Draw this red line, point, point, intersection, intersection, G, this circle should be tangent. And I have no idea why that's happening. So 
Circumscribed means it has an in circle, but we think it probably has a circum circle if the condition is true. So I need to show that g x prime y prime is tangent. And I am feeling inversion at e. But I can't quite get it. M X prime I Y prime K E Okay, we're gonna at this point we're going to uh How do I find x prime and y prime? Um, they are the second intersections of line en and el with the purple circle. So you start with the purple kite, and then you pick n and l on the green circle, and you construct x prime and y prime accordingly. Here we are. So I have a feeling that these might concur. Yep, I have the right feeling. Why do these concur? I have no idea. Uh, that's got to be a very general statement, though. Uh, why do they concur? Why do they concur? Why do they concur? Why do they concur? Uh, freaking no! I just want to select the segment, color it slightly differently. Okay, so that doesn't even involve the circle. That's just I have a cyclic hexagon that is fixed by inversion, so its diagonals are concurrent. I really should know why that's true, but I don't. <laughs> why is it true that if I have a cyclic hexagon that's fixed by inversion, then the diagonals are concurrent? The higher, the higher, the higher, the higher, the higher, the higher. Ah, yes, okay, that's by... Right, okay, that's by Brocard. So, that point E on the bottom is N, N prime, intersect like LL prime, so the polar of that point will power. Okay, yeah, it's just Brocard. It's not, uh... It's sort of you can you can do it with two applications of Pascal. Cool. So we established that. That's G. Now I need to show G X prime Y prime. This circle is tangent to M K, and this is strange as heck. I don't like. I just don't know what that um. N N prime L L prime. Maybe with the midpoints. I, I, I had the same feeling that I wanted to construct x prime y prime intersects mk. Uh, I'm running out of letters of the alphabet, unfortunately, but let's call it v. Why not? v equals line x prime y prime uh, intersect uh, km. Yeah, it, it, ha it definitely, I agree, has a Desarg involutions feel. Unfortunately, I, this is one of the theorems I never really became super comfortable with, but... Uh, Alright, so it's red. So how would the Sarg involution work? It's... For the Sarg 
We probably want the dual, maybe? I'm not sure. But that's a... Okay, there's a quadrilateral. And that quadrilateral... If I want to use the dual, I need an inscribed conic. Or something. Okay, actually, I will put it this way. What do I do with X prime and Y prime? Um... V X prime times V Y prime. Oh, actually, there's a radical center somewhere. Hang on. Um, so X M C. Okay, so V X prime times V Y prime equals V M times V K. Um, have you limited A B C D? We are still trying to prove this claim. This claim we think is. I think this claim is the first key lemma I want to prove, and I am really struggling with it. But A B C D. At least for the purposes of this game, ABCD is supposed to be gone. And I'll have to resurrect it later. Um, but... Cool shot. Um... What are all these point names? Uh... G is the G is just that intersection. It's like three things in the United. Uh, some points were inverted. I put it that way. This is, I agree this is probably too what they suck somehow, but I don't see it. Thank you, doll. Save it for the follow. This might be... This might have The claim inverted is equivalent to the problem? Uh... No. It's just a claim, and I, we haven't been able to prove it, because this problem is freaking hard. Uh... Jeez, what the heck? 
It has to be some sort of DDIT. I think. But I can't see it. Reflection of G over V M G K. Okay, so no, it's not. Uh, VG, we want VG squared equals VM times VK. VM times VK. That's not quite a projective condition, right? It's like... So, okay, I'm going to add the points. I was hoping maybe I didn't need to. Um, so I think by generalized butterfly theorem, if the claim is true, then V is the center of an involution, swapping M to K, N1 with L1, and G to itself. In fact, uh, so by the dual of... Oh no, G is the inverse of... No, it's not. What? I'm getting more confused by the moment. Um... Yeah, yeah. Um, Vm times Vk, that's what I've been staring at. And I believe that Vn1... There's a unique... By do a Desarg on... Or, no, just straight... By Desarg's evolution theorem on n prime n l prime l, also known as generalized butterfly, there is a point... There's a unique point such that Vm times Vk equals Vn1 times Vl1 equals Vg squared. So actually it would be enough for me to show that Vm... Vn1 times Vl1 is also equal to that thing. So to that end, are those cyclic? Okay, so it's enough for me to show these guys are cyclic. Wait, actually, I can probably just single trace that, can't I? Can I? Uh... Yeah, that will do it. Did, actually, this is cyclic by the shooting. Okay, we got it. We got it. We got it. So by the shooting lemma, um, yeah, by the shooting lemma, 
X prime N1 L1 Y prime is cyclic. Now construct this point V here. V is the same power, so V X prime times V Y prime is V M times V K, so equals V N1 times V L1. However, by the generalized butterfly theorem, also known as Desargues involution theorem on N N prime L prime L, we also have V G squared. There's um, if V satisfies these two relations, then V G squared is also equal to do, and that gives us you the desired tangency. Oh, also, and the reason G is there is because of um, Brocard's theorem. Wow, what the heck? Okay, that happened. Uh, great, so we proved the lemma. <laughs> Back to the original problem. Uh, man, this problem is, this problem is crazy. Yeah, we're just getting started. That was the first step. All right, so now I want to hide all the things and go back to X prime. Actually, you know what? Let's keep this. Let's keep it like so. Uh, you know, maybe I will. I think this diagram actually made sense, unlike the rest of the problem. So I'm gonna just mostly try to keep as much of this as I can. Uh. Okay, which which where where which lines did I hide? Okay, I just undo, 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 undo. Okay, so we probably we might not need double n one l one anymore, but so we we have the tangency that we are looking for this circle. Now the problem is interested in if f prime also lies on the black circle. That so if the midpoint of l n lies on the black circle, my goal is to show that the two red lines, KL and MN, are perpendicular. Like that. So that's where we're at. Um, so I want to show F prime. Okay, so I don't I don't care about C anymore. I don't really care about F. This is the picture I want. This is the one that actually makes like any sense at all. I want to show that if, yeah, this implies also, okay, so here, what do I do? I don't, I don't, I don't have any idea. So if the midpoints of NN prime, NL, and LO prime all lie on this circle here, what does that do for me? Um, da, 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 da. Well, it gives me some angles, presumably. Let's see if those angles are any good. Um, How do I chase these angles? <laughs> is f prime? Yeah. So the, it, the problem is equivalent. We believe that the problem is now if f prime, the midpoint of ln, lies on this special circle, this special whatever it is called, then km perpendicular to ln and vice versa, which seems like it's true. Yeah. Okay. I'm. It's definitely true. I just don't know how to prove it. That's the only problem. So first of all, let's do the easy. There should be one easy direction. If they are actually perpendicular, um, why are those points cyclic? Because if they're there, there should be a good reason why they're cyclic, right? And that reason is I have no idea. What's the reason? Uh, do I angle chase through like uh, there's like three different midpoints? It's like perpendicular, perpendicular, and perpendicular. Um,
There's probably some Mikkel stuff happening. Also, seven gazillion sigma quads. Um, are there any parallelograms? If you na if you can see one, I'd like to know. I don't see any right now, but I have been known to miss things. I want those two circle specs. Um, I N. This circle shouldn't be. Slight. This should be like. Okay, so I have some angles. I can chase angles. Right, right, right. Maybe, I hope. Is V prime, N prime, Y prime, N prime. Where's, was, where's V prime? No, V, N prime, Y, N prime. V, N prime, Y prime, N. Mm, it shouldn't be. If that's a parallelogram, then by symmetry, V, X, L, L prime better be one as well, which it's not. Um, I have, uh, okay, I'm gonna construct a point. I'm gonna construct the midpoint of N. Uh, okay, wait. So we have three midpoints, right? The only midpoint that we don't have in this picture right now is the midpoint of L prime, N prime. So we're gonna call that, uh, ugh, I'm out of the letters. W equals midpoint L prime, N prime. And that, that does give us a parallelogram because now we have the four midpoints. It's like F prime, Y prime, W, X prime. Uh, I don't know if that did anything like at all. Uh, well, okay, Th there is some ways to chase single. Like F prime, Y prime is like, okay. Y prime G K is equal to Y prime F G, which because of the parallel lines is equal to like some other angle. So some of the angles look like they should be able to move. G prime is Mikkel point by NPC. Line point several? No. Yeah, okay. So given these are concurrent, um, yeah, there, there's a bunch of angles that f that we should be able to get out of this. So let me, let me just try chasing some of them. So like uh, y prime gk. Actually, you know, let's go for the gold. F prime gk. That's the angle I am going to try and chase. And it's allegedly, uh, or let's, let's do it in a way I can actually read it. F prime GM is equal to F prime Y prime G because of the tangency. And F prime Y prime G is, oh geez. Uh, I want to move f prime y prime to like nl prime or something like that. <sighs> mm. 
Maybe that's not gonna work. Maybe I should just use complex numbers. <laughs> Sounds like a bad idea. Uh... Mm. Like there's there's like little okay, let's let's try the following angle. So um X prime GM is apparently equal to x prime f prime g would equal to n prime l n that's a reasonably good angle uh n prime l n i might i will it's like n prime k n or something so i can transfer it all the way to the arc of the green circle um Meanwhile, can you restate it without M and E? Uh, maybe you meant M K E. Yeah, the midpoints really suck. Uh... Maybe I should transfer both of them or something. So X prime G Y prime. Can I do anything with that? Is W the ortho center? of g x prime y prime oh no way right maybe yeah you're correct it is indeed an ortho center because that we already know this actually because oh wait okay that's interesting this is an ortho center really because x w prime is perpendicular to f prime y so it is true a 
posteriori. Interesting. So there's a parallelogram, I agree. And... Okay. Okay. Huh. That's interesting. So if f prime g is... What, what's the condition? I, I don't know what's going on anymore. Um, I agree it says orthos energy prime x prime y prime though. What's the What I really want is some just sort of angle chase to like get the thing I need. Like x prime f prime y prime is an angle I can compute because f prime y prime I can dilate to n l prime and x prime f prime is n prime l. So um, yeah that, that's just that's the difference of these two x. Meanwhile um, What is angle x prime g y prime? I don't freaking know. Uh, X prime G Y prime is angle between L N prime and N prime L. Oh, do you have, wait? How do you get that unconditionally? Because that's what I need. Because right or right now what I have is like if F prime lies on the circle, then X prime G prime Y prime is like X prime F Y prime, and then I get the two dimensions. If there's a second way to get at that angle, I want to know. X prime, F prime, and F prime, Y prime. Okay, I think we had the same one. Which is, okay, fine. I told me we had two different ways to compute the angle. Looks like we have exactly one. What does the short angle condition mean anyways? Like, it bugs me a little because it's like not really symmetric. These two circles are... Why? What does a right angle there mean? <laughs> Maybe I should go after f prime x prime g? 
FMX Prime G is... What does it look as if F prime if L is shifted? I mean, it's a circle. Yeah, it's a circle with diameter in. How do I do this? I want to show that LN is going to go perfect at MK if and only if that red circle passes through F prime. Maybe I should be looking more into that with those other things. So it's X prime W, F prime Y is a parallelogram. That's pretty strong. So I have this circle and then I had a point that lies on G, W. Yeah, so it's already given to lie on there. Um, so what, is that, what does that mean actually? If I have a point and I, it's reflection, take the, take the reflection. Echo cancel. What did? I don't know what my echo was doing. What are my thoughts on caddy mounts? These fine, sure, but I don't. I don't know. <laughs> they exist.
I agree complex is very feasible at this point. Like, all of these points are very computable. You, I would use n and prime, l, l prime is the free variables. Compute this midpoint, this is a midpoint, this is a midpoint, this is the intersection, and say these four are cyclic if and only if this guy is in the same direction as um, i, e. So I agree it should be very doable. Um, the cyclic part might be the most annoying part, it's like showing that those points are cyclic or something, but it's there. For sufficiently... Yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with the midpoints. Um... I wonder if I can show like... These, the orange and red lines are always a Sogno or something. Is that true? Ah, oh, frick. Huh. Okay, new claim, new claim. Uh... New claim, orange line and red line are isognal. Why is that? Uh, you think it's spiral? I don't- the, the triangles aren't- don't have the same orientation though. Uh... Oh, okay, here's the reason. Um, N prime G N and L G L prime are similar because of the cyclic quad. And then this is half of it, this is half- yeah, they're corresponding parts of similar triangles. So then you empathically get a sagonality. Okay, so if f prime lies on the circle, then w lies on it. Th or sorry, f prime lies on the circle. Uh, let me get this straight. If f prime lies on the circle, then if and only if So this is an isognality lemma or something, right? Like that says Even if f prime doesn't lie on the circle, um, this promises that the extension of y prime w to here and x prime w to here makes a cyclic quad. Like it promises that um, g x prime w is equal to g y prime w. Those things are always equal. So I bet there's only like one point such that the reflection. Yeah, yeah. This sh this should be almost basically enough. Um... Okay. 
Okay, so those triangles are all unconditionally similar. Honestly, I wonder if I can just get it from here. So n prime, x prime, y prime. With the isognality, um, that should give an orthos and per, right? So f prime is the root, so that's a parallelogram, um, but also w lies on the isognal. That should only happen for maybe. Uh, I need to, I need to double check that. So that angle is equal to that angle. Yeah, that uniquely identifies it as the antipode. That is sufficient. So if it's on the circle, then it's the antipode. Conversely, if it's the antipode, um, The same argument should work in reverse, I think. Or if there's a right angle there, um, then Then it should be okay. I believe. I think that should work. Yeah, the, the, the trick is that those two triangles were actually unconditionally... Yeah, this unconditional isognality. So I focus on just the red circle, and on one hand, there's like f prime, like you have this parallelogram and the isognal always. Um, what that promises is that the angle formed by this x prime f and that is equal to the angle formed by this and this. So if f prime is on the circle, then you get the right angle. If we have the right angle here, yeah, the isognal lemony lemma should do it. First one, yeah. It converts the if this is a right angle. Then, then what? Um, actually, the converse direction is a little more confusing. Um, Oh no, this is the, di if it's a, then this is a, there's our lines of diameter. So this line is an altitude. So this antipode must be for this to, this altitude. So this is a circumdiameter. And then F prime is, okay, if I know these are right angles, this is a right angle. 
Um, why does it have prime? Why does it bisect have prime? Again, I have a, both a parallelogram and uh, well, okay. Well, I just argue that f prime has the correct angle, right? Because something maybe. And it's part of a parallelogram. Yeah, but I think that isogonality lemma is the trick here. This is gonna be quite annoying to write out though. So it's if if I have the right angle tangent, da da da, you know, there's a the midpoint. I draw the two midpoints. They may not lie on the circle, but um, they lie on isogonals and are reflected. Yeah, okay, the, the only point that satisfies that is the... The zone center, okay. That's a weird argument, actually. I, I don't like... It feels crazy to me, but I think that's, that's correct. So the ortho-centered thing turned out to be the thing I needed to use. Okay. All right, we we can call it from here. Wow, what a problem. Can you repeat your argument? Yeah. So once you have this isogonal, um, this is actually easier if I just draw a separate diagram. So, this is what the picture looks like. You have G prime x, y. Uh, sorry, I got the primes completely wrong. The argument is I have g, x prime, y prime, and I was able to show that there's two isogonal lines. And f prime and, um, I forgot the other one. W, we call it W, make a parallelogram here. It's a really bad parallelogram. Uh, Well, we'll just draw the picture slightly so that it looks better. <laughs> Still does not look like a parallelogram at all. <laughs> Alright, that's how much I can do about that. Uh, 
W, so this is F prime. So basically, um, what we are hoping is that W will be the orthocenter and F prime will be the antipode. Um, okay, so this picture is completely off, actually. Screw it. Bye, 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 bye. Um, around here. And around there. Okay, so basically there's there's a lot of, there's like two constraints that are given. There's an isogonality constraint and there is the parallelogram constraint. And there's some possible additional hypotheses. Um, you could have, uh, in one direction, you could add the condition that F prime is on the circle. In the other condition, you can add the constraint that um, these things are altitude and diameter. And uh, basically, like because of geo, um, if you have if you're given three of them, the fourth one follows. So any three of these conditions will imply the fourth condition because there's not an just by like counting the degrees of freedom or something. I don't know. Uh, So basically, any three imply the any three of them imply the other one. So that gives us the if and only if you want. It's it's hard to write out. I think I I would need to like sit down and think a little bit about it. But the isogonality lemma is the thing that tells you that these first two conditions unconditionally tell you that this angle is equal to this angle. Which is pretty good because you also have like the parallelogram itself. So if F prime is on the circle, it will give you a statement about arcs that will translate to saying that F prime is on the um, circle. And if you have altitude and diameter, then you should be able to also extract cyclic, I think, just by chasing the angles. G X prime F G Y prime G X prime F prime. Oh, good point. Yeah, that that's much easier to work with. What am I doing? Uh, this is equal to that. Is also follows. Yeah, follows from the isogonal lemma. The lemma applied the other way. Okay, that's better. So if F prime is on the circle, then they're definitely right angles. And conversely, if I have altitude and diameter, um. Yeah, F prime was just gone there. So we're okay. We're just okay. Everything's fine. If there, if I have altitude and diameter, then I can compute all the angles explicitly, and. Yeah, okay, those angles are too fat. Should I should I just write it out? Uh, if this was actually a right angle, and then this passes through the antipode, um, then call this alpha, alpha, beta, beta. Um, this is 90 minus alpha minus beta. So this is 90 minus alpha minus beta. And this angle is equal to um, whatever it is. I feel like I didn't use a condition somewhere.
Hang on, how do I get these to add up? <laughs> ah, crap. Uh... Help. <laughs> this, this part's supposed to be easy. I claimed it was easy. No, I can't do it. Uh... Okay, oh no, okay. The point is that now I know this angle, because this angle will be 180 uh, to alpha plus 2 beta plus theta. So this one is as well. Wait, uh, now I'm confused. What? What am I doing? Who am I? What's my name? Uh, oh god, these angles. Like, the claim really should be that the only... Oh, I see. Okay, the problem is that it's actually false if G... If the triangle is scaly... If... Isosceles. Okay, that's why I can't prove it. Um, I So I need, like, GX prime to not equal GY prime. Um... I see, okay. The, the, the claim is actually false if gx prime is equal to gy prime. Um, but if that's so, then the point v doesn't exist. And yeah, you can try to... Yeah, that's going to be a very annoying meaningless argument, though. But it does... Yeah, okay, okay, I, I I see. As long as G, they are not the same line, then there can't... There's a good pair that we know that's like this, so there can't be another bad pair like this because that would give us a um, parallelogram whose opposite sides meet at G. Unless GX prime equals GY prime, which is the case only if... There's no way I can do it with this K element, right? Because we assume that G is... This would require G to be the midpoint of MN. Which would require KLMN to be a kite. Which would require the tensor L and N to not meet. Okay, so we're okay. Oh, Jesus. Okay, now we're actually done. Oh. What a problem. What a day. <laughs> GG! We did it! What is that? To be honest, the solution is not that long once you compile it. Like, we, I spent a lot of time looking at it not knowing... The problem is there's too many points, and I couldn't tell which points were important until... I saw that important claim. Um, I don't know. What a monster. Oh, Jesus.